I'll be talking about a 76 years old female who had come to me in my OPD with the complaints of pain below left knee, inability to weight bear, and swelling over the shin for last three months. When I examined her, she had virus deformity, inclined tenderness, and abnormal mobility in the proximal tibia region. <coughs> when I got her X-ray done, the X-ray was like this, which is showing severe osteoarthritis along with the stress fracture. When I asked her regarding the details of her history, she told me that she had knee pain since last 10 years. She was diagnosed with osteoarthritis knee. She was advised knee replacement, but she didn't opt for it. She kept on walking on those deformed legs till the time when she could not wet beer. So I had four treatment options. The first one was plaster immobilization for six weeks. Once the fracture heals up, mobilization. But then here the arthritis part is not addressed. Chances of refracture are quite high. Fracture fixation using nail or plate. Again, the same thing. Arthritis part is not addressed. The third option was plaster immobilization for six weeks. Once the fracture heals up, total knee replacement. But this is a quite morbid option. The fourth option which I chose was total knee replacement using tibial stem extension rod. It addresses all the three problems in one go. The osteoarthritis, the fracture, chances of refracture, and we can mobilize the knee aggressively post-operatively to avoid stiffness. When I had this option in my mind, I thought I should peep into the literature. And what I found was this article from SICOR. This is a study done in Ganga Hospital, wherein they operated on 20 patients who had severe osteoarthritis knee with stress fracture. They used posterior, posterior stabilized implant with long stem. In 19 patients, they got excellent results. One patient, there was poor outcome because of infection, but union was achieved in all the patients. All in all, all the 20 patients, the union was achieved and 19 patients did quite well. So this is another article from the archives of bone and joint surgery, wherein, this, this, wherein in Iran, this study was done where they operated on 16 patients. PS implant with long stem was used. Union was achieved at nine weeks. All the patients had good outcome. And lastly, this study from KM Hospital, Mumbai, which was published in Journal of Orthopedic Surgery. This study was done under the mentorship of uh, Bhosle sir, wherein we had operated upon 31 cases of tibial stress fracture, out of which 26 had virus deformity. All, in all the cases, we could achieve good union and all the patients had good functional outcome. So after going through this literature review, I opted for going ahead with TKR with same extension rod. When I took the patient on the table, Is that a video? Yes, sir. Uh, maybe not opening. Maybe Kailash had the same problem. But uh, just try once or those. Go to the next slide. Okay. So uh, on table, what I could find was there was abnormal mobility at the fracture site. So I went ahead with this uh, total knee replacement. I used Indus system for finishing finishing up this job. And as you can see, the um, implants are positioned well and the uh, stem is also in good position. This patient, her knee was now uh, having valgus alignment. This was six weeks post-surgery x-ray, which was showing good callus formation. And at four months, 
you can all we can already see uh, union at the lateral and the posterior cortex this patient did quite well so this was the x ray this was uh the video is not being played sir anyway yes sir uh, so you have it last x ray long term x ray sir this is la the final follow up she is yeah. now 5 years post surgery she is doing quite well she is walking comfortably though she is having pain in the other knee but her operated knee is doing quite well okay the, uh, any any other x ray beyond this uh no sir unfortunately i am not having she stays quite a long so i had yeah. to get this video um on whatsapp only but okay this was the final x ray which was showing uh good union okay amol there is one important a uh, factor which we have to consider this is a very common uh, problem which you see in a very yeah. severely deformed knees in a varus cases and that's probably the first thing which most of the delegates or most of the people listening to this symposium uh, who is going to face when they start doing knee replacement surgery that they get a bad varus and unless you take a one long x ray of the tibia they sometimes miss a fracture which is little away from the joint line yes now the question is how do you decide that the rod which you do is adequate or do you need to have something else should you do an additional thing like additional plating on the fracture or some bone grafting so how do you take a call on that sir uh, uh, when i peeped into the literature uh, in a study in ganga hospital they had to do plating and bone grafting for two patients in whom there was mal union at the fracture site but in all mobile non union or delay uh, stress fracture site they had put stem extension rod and that sufficed the problem that sufficed for the problem it achieved good bone union at the same time the arthritis was addressed so if the uh, if the fracture site is mobile the extension rod can be passed across the fracture site then probably it is not needed to fix it with plate or screws if there is mal union maybe osteotomy and fixing it with plate and screws and adding bone graft will be an additional procedure to be done okay uh, and one more question is we have a mobile non union at the lower end uh, upper end of the tibia how do you take the tbl cut because the upper end of the tibia will not be very stable there will be a fracture it is almost like an extra articular deformity at a stress fracture site yes so sir. what precaution you take to take a cut so that you can get a good cut sir uh, there are two options one is intramedullary zig we can use the intramedullary rod which is passed across the fracture site will itself stabilize the fracture and the zig will help us taking the cut i was not having the intramedullary zig so i used conventional extramedullary zig but i asked my assistant to hold the reduction on table when i was applying the zig and when i was taking the cut on top of that i used siam system to confirm that my cut is absolutely perpendicular to the anatomical axis of the tibia okay good uh, anybody else has a question uh, parag No, no, I think yeah. a good case. Lot of good messages. Uh, you know, these kind of things are uh, seen. So it's an intraoperative decision whether you want to add a plate or not. Most of the times, if you have a canal filling stem which is long enough and you know bypassing the fracture, you will not need. But uh, if it is required, then you should. And uh, as far as possible, if you are not going to add a plate, don't bone graft it. Only if you are going to add a plate, then bone graft it. You don't want to open the fracture site. Uh, unnecessarily just to do bone graft because you have cancellous bone available with you so those are my few comments uh, a very good uh, uh, case amol let's uh, yeah. go to the next case mm -hmm.